Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'firuhu Wa ashan la ilaha illallah Wa ahduhu la shibihira Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Allahumma salli ala muhammadan wa ala alihi muhammadan wa salli ala ibrahim wa ala alihi ibrahim wa ala muhammadan wa ala alihi muhammadan kama salli ala ibrahim wa ala alihi ibrahim fi al alamin inna ta hamidun mujib thumma amma ba'd after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the salutations on his blessed and noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam as he has sent it upon our father of Tawheed Ibrahim and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his family <clears throat> as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has blessed the family of Ibrahim and those that are from his <clears throat> lineage then we continue with the Tafsir Ibn Kathir Hafiz ibn al-Kathir rahimahullahu tabarakhu wa ta'ala We're still in the introduction of the tafsir of ibn Kathir talking about the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about how Ibrahim, how, <coughs> pardon me, how ibn al-Kathir brings the verses proving that praise must be given to Allah Allah himself praises his own self subhanahu wa ta'ala many places in his book and this is the portion of the explanation of Tafsir ibn Kathir that we are taking benefit from inshallah tabarakahu wa ta'ala <coughs> we have started last time with some of the verses where Allah Mention the likes of the verse in Al-Fatiha, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, showing that Allah praises Himself in the open book. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Ibn Kathir, had brought praises Himself, the one who <coughs> sent the book to His Prophet, who was Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that book that has no crookedness in it. Then, Ibn Kathir, he brought some of the verses where Allah had praised himself in other circumstances and in other incidents, such as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praising himself after he created the heavens and the earth. After he has created the heavens and the earth and that which is in them, and after he had Subhanahu wa ta'ala created that which is many shades, many types of darknesses, that which is considered to be blameworthy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created nur, that which is guidance, that which is light. And Allah praised himself in that regard. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ibn Kathir, he brought the verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows the scene from Yom al Qiyamah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have all of the creation before him and he is the true king before Yom al Qiyamah and he is the true king on Yom al Qiyamah and then the matter will be decided as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have around his throne around his arsh 
is a magnificent throne, the angels. And it will be praised by the angels when the final decision is made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the decision here, either the other person will be punished for that which he or she did, or the decision that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would grant an individual the paradise. And both of those are two of the ma most magnificent actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As no one can create a Jannah except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and decorate that Jannah with all types of hardship, all types of trial and tribulation and enable after his created creation to endure that, endure that type of life and go to the paradise except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, no one can create a hellfire and decorate it with all times of all types of pardon me glitter, all types of things that are attractive, all types of all types of lustful things, things that are intriguing and things that are entrapment and enabling a human being knowing that it is grounds for punishment, grounds for hellfire, an able human being after he or she is created with the knowledge and the intellect to avoid all harms, to treat that harm insignificant, thus landing themselves into hellfire. And these are from amongst the greatest of creation, the Jannah, the paradise, and the hellfire, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granting an individual the entrance of those two are from the most greatest from amongst the most magnificent scenes of Yom Qiyamah thus the angels they will praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon those actions and incidents on that great day and Imam al hafiz ibn Kathir from that point we had mentioned some of the benefits around the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which we find in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason being is because Ibn Kathir himself, he's praising Allah for the success that Allah has given him. He's praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding him aright and allowing him to do many great works such as a tafsir, tafsir and Quran Azim, the tafsir the explanation of the magnificent Quran. And we continue, inshallah, with some of the benefits from the tafsir of Imam al Hafiz Abu Ismail <coughs> Ibn Kathir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ibn Kathir, he mentions. كما قال الله تعالى as Allah the Most High said when he's talking about his statement before this of praising Allah saying Alhamdulillah and SubhanAllah glorifying Allah wa ta'ala as the previous verse already established the, the magnificent status of this and the Prophet had already mentioned as Ibn Kathir brought the hadith that is collected in the Sahih of Imam Muslim is collected also in the Sunnah of Imam Abi Dawood and the Musnad of Imam Ahmed and others than them with the sound chain that these um, statements or those statements that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fills the heavens and the earth and it fills the scales and whatever Allah wishes besides that the statement Alhamdulillah and subhanAllah it fills the heart of the believer it fills the life and the house of Allah, the masjid. And thus, Ibn Kathir, he continues talking about this issue. He says, just as Allah has said, <clears throat> Allah Ta'ala, inna ladina amanu wa amalu salihat. And verily those who believe, meaning believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything is connected to Allah. His rububiyah, his lordship, his uluhiyah, or ibadah and his servitude or 
worship to him. Wal asma'i wa sifat. His lofty, his beautiful name and his lofty characteristics and actions. Without adding, without subtracting, and without denying those great actions and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believe in Allah. Wa malaikatihi. All of his angels. Those angels that have been named by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his messenger and those that have not been named such as Jibreel alayhi salam wa huwa al-maliku mawakki wa huwa maliku mawakki al-biwahi he is the angel as the ulama have said that has been given the <coughs> job or given the responsibility of delivering from Allah to the Prophet's revelation or Mada Mikael, Mikael, the angel of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has given the responsibility and the job of distributing the different climates and the different elements such as wind, such as rain, such as snow, such as moving the clouds, Wahibadik, and other than that. And such as the angel that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala calls him Malakul Mawt, the angel of death. That Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala sends at the time of death to take the soul of the individual. And Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, from the angels that Allah has mentioned by name, Yani Munka wa Nakir, as the Prophet has mentioned them in the authentic hadith, they are the two angels that question the person at the time after the soul has been snatched. Man Rabbu, who was your Lord? Or Man what was your religion? Or Man and who was your prophet? And then some narrations are authentically reported. And what did you do about that man that was sent to you? Did you follow him? Did you believe in him? Did you defend his religion? Did you try to imitate him? How did you live your life in opposition to him? And other than that, from the angels of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has mentioned, يعني على اليمين وعلى الشمال يعني ماذا عطيد رقيب عطيد those angels that they write everything that you say everything that you other everything that you mention on the right and the left angels describing writing down the actions and the statements of the human beings from amongst the angels of Allah تبارك وتعالى his prophet is mentioned and Allah has mentioned the angels that assist the believers on the day of battle, on the day of warfare, on the day of defending their honor, their life, their deen, their family. Those angels that Allah sends down and thousands. Those angels that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala aids the believers with from amongst the angels. That Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has mentioned the angel, Khazan and Nar, the angel that is the gatekeeper of the hellfire, of the hellfire. And the angels that are yani, the gatekeeper of the Jannah that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala mentions. From amongst the angels that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions on the tongue of his Prophet Sallam and the various hadith of Qudsi where Allah speaks and it is the explanation of that hadith by the Prophet Sallam where the angels descend every Fajr and every Asr they change ships. A group of them come down and they stay with the inhabitants of the earth, recording and praising the actions of the believers. And they return back to Allah at awesome time, reporting what they witness of the worship on earth of the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when they descend from this house, that is the special house of angels in the paradise, they never return. And this shows the, the, this shows the multitudes and the greatness of the angels that Allah has created that have been made to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala and from amongst the angels that have not been authentically reported on the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam Israel as this hadith is not reported on the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Israfil and Israel these names are known to be in the books of hadith about the angels. Israfil, Israel, Israfil, Israel. Malakul Mawt is the name of the angel of death. Israel, Yani, is supposed to be the angel 
who uh, blows the trumpet. And then you have Israfil, and these narrations have not been authentically reported, mentioning the angels in this um, light, the likes of Israel. I'm uh, um, uh, Israfil, Israfil, pardon me, Israel is authentically reported on the Prophet. Israfil is not reported on the Prophet Sallam and this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects me inshallah my memory serves me correct. So these are from amongst the believers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning and from amongst the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his prophets and messengers all of them from the first of them being Noah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prophet said, he's the first of the prophets to the earth. He's the first of the messengers to the earth. And the awwal anbiya, awwal al-rusul ila yani awwal al-rusul ila al-ark, yani noh. But this doesn't mean he had a book. This just means that he was sent to give the message to the people. As typically, when you talk about a people having a messenger, they have a book. The messenger also means that a person sent to a people who disbelieved. And there was no shirk in between the ten generations from Adam to Noah. From Adam to Noah, Ibn Kathir mentioned there were ten generations. There was no shirk on the earth. Then in the time of Noah, the people began to make shirk with Allah. And thus Noah was sent to warn those disbelieving people. But he is not from amongst those uh, messengers that had the book, although he's called from amongst the first messengers, he's the first messenger, meaning to the people of the earth, but not from amongst the first messengers with books. As Ibrahim is the first messenger with the suhuf of Ibrahim, the pages of Ibrahim, and all of the prophets have to be believed in, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned them. And then you have the belief. Mada fi kutubillahi tabarahu wa ta'ala and all of the books that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent and this includes the previous books as well as the last the most of the uh, the last and the most greatest from amongst them that is the Quran kitab Allah tabarahu wa ta'ala and then you have believing in mada al yawm al akhiru believing in the last day and a person who believes in everything else but denies the day of judgment then this is the individual that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said and this believers they make the false claim that we will never be resurrected for the bala or rabbi say no you guys are lying by my Lord, I swear, la tuba athunna, you will be resurrected. Thumma yunabbi'unna bima amiltum. And then you will be on top of that resurrection, informed of what you used to do. With dhalika Allah yaseer. And for Allah, that's easy. For Allah, it's easy that He create you and cause you to have life after you didn't exist. And then cause you to perish again, not to exist. And then raise you up and then question you about that which you used to do. Therefore, whoever disbelieves in Yom Al-Akhir, whoever disbelieves in the resurrection, whoever disbelieves in the last day, he, for, for he is from amongst the disbelievers, for he is amongst those who exit or never enters into Al-Islam. And then you have وَتُؤْمِنُوا بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرْهِ from the Hadith of Jibreel, which it's one of the most greatest parts of Iman and belief that is to believe in the divine decree that Allah decided and He wrote and everything is already predestined. We're just going through the motion and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wrote in that decree as a test of good and bad and a person has to believe in that. Inna ladina amanu wa amalu salihat wa amalu salihat those who do the deeds that are in accordance with the book and the sunnah. Those who do the, de the deeds that the Prophet ﷺ came to teach us. And verily those who believe and do righteous deeds. 
يَهْدِيَهُمْ بِإِيمَانِهِمْ Then because of their belief and righteous deeds, their Lord guides them. Their Lord guides them. As he relates to their levels of iman. Yahdiahum Rabbahum the Imanihim. Allah guides them and <clears throat> makes those people increase in their iman. Tajri men tahtihal anhar, which because of their iman they will be on the rivers, gardens underneath which the rivers flow, the Jannatin Naim, and a delightful abode. Da'wahum, meaning those people believe and do righteous deeds and enter the Jannah. Their claim, da'wahum fiha, at that time, their invocation. And da'wah here has different meanings. Sometimes da'wah means that you invite a person. You call them to Islam. Sometimes da'wah means you've been given an invitation, like to a walima. As Prophet mentioned, uh, this word, yani da'wa, as it relates to invitation for the wedding ceremony. Sometimes da'wa means what you claim, or I'm um, pardon me, what you proclaim, what you say off your tongue. Other times da'wa means that you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in du'a. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says da'wa hum. Da'wa is their claim. Whom those who believe in the righteous deeds who enter Jannah on that day, that wa hu fiha, what they will be saying at that time in the paradise, Subhanaka Allahumma, glory be to you, O Allah. Wa tahiya to whom fiha salamun. And those people who enter Jannah because of their belief in righteous deeds, and they will be saying at that time in that paradise, in that state, Glory be to you, O oh Allah, Subhanaka Allahumma. They will be greeted. They will be greeted. Fiha salamun. With salamun. And salamun here is natural in the Arabic language. It's general. So salamun, they will be greeted with salam, the word of salam. They will have everlasting, eternal salam, meaning no type of smell, no type of sickness, no type of, um, um, no type of um, ailments. No type of um, discomfort, no tiredness, no sleep, no fatigue, anything that's indicative of the human life that we know today. Salamun here means they won't have that. Subhanallah. Even the body will be different. As there's a hadith, I remember being in one of the classes of... <clears throat> Uh, dear brother in Islam, Sheikh Bassam Ubaid, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, in Charlotte, and he was bringing the hadith about the Jewish man that came to ask the Prophet these three questions. And one of them, he said, What will be the food of the people in Jannah? What will be the first thing that they will eat when they go to the Jannah? And the Prophet said, They will eat the liver of the whale. The liver of the whale. That will be the first thing that the people eat when they go to the Jannah. Now the Sheikh was explaining that some of the people of knowledge of Tafsir, they have an a, a, a idea of why. Because they said that this liver of the whale is something that has special properties in it. Special bio and special things in the liver of the whale. And that normally when a person in this life is born, they have to have certain um, antibodies, certain fats, certain minerals and stuff like that. And this is part of the benefit of a child and the wisdom of him drinking from his mother's breast, from her drinking from the mother's breast. And that that liquid that they get in the beginning, although it's white in color, is not milk. It's the things that they need, the antibodies, the fats, different things that will help them digest whatever comes after that of milk and so forth, water. So he said that this liver of the whale has a special thing in it that if a person eats this, 
their body will be conditioned to a certain way. And because the foods in the Jannah won't be like the foods in this life, then the body has to be conditioned to take those foods. Thus the Prophet said the first food of the Jannah is this type of um, liver from the well in order to make the body able to digest that, that foreign food that's different from the food in this life. So here when we talk about Salamun, this is one of the aspects of it that you will never be sick, never have to go to the bathroom, never have to pass when or defecate a urine, and this is indicative of and if he has salamun, tahiyya to home, if he has salamun, they will be greeted, the believers in the paradise with total salam, total peace, tranquility, and safety from every harm. And the last statement that they would say, their last call out, their last word after that great entrance of the paradise, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen that we give all praise to the Allah Lord of the world. Subhanahu Rabbil Alameen. And this just shows the greatness of Allah that He's praised in all circumstances at all times. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. The Shaykh continues, Al Imam Hafid ibn Kufir, Himahallah Ta'ala, may Allah have mercy on him. Walhamdulillah Ladi Arsala Rasulahu. The statement of Allah in the Quran and Allah praise be to him, he praises himself, the one who has sent his messengers. The one who has sent Yani Mada Rasulahu, his messenger, not messengers so his messenger meaning Muhammad. Ibn Kathir, he says, in parentheses, the verse, Mubashirina wa Munzirin. How did he send the messenger? Allah informs us. He sent them as Mubashirin wa Munzirin. Mubashirin is the one who gives you glad tidings. From the word Bashir or Bushir. Bushra. So Mubashirin is the one who is doing the delivering of the good news. What moon the rain from the word in Zar to warn an individual. Moon the rain is those people that come and they give you the warning. The Prophet is described, described here in two situations or two um, descriptions of why Allah sent him. Mubashirin, meaning to those who believe, give them glad tidings. If you believe, then Allah will forgive you. If you believe, then Allah will aid you. If you believe, in the end, Allah will allow you the entrance to the Jannah. For Mundarin, the warning. If you disbelieve, then Allah will not be pleased with you. If you disbelieve, then Allah will leave you to all types of destruction. If you disbelieve, if you turn away, if you reject faith, then Allah will will enter you into the fire. As a giver of glad tidings and a warner. That was the description and why the prophet was sent. Why was he sent? As a glad giver of tidings or a giver of glad tidings, pardon me. A giver of glad tidings to the believer and a warner to the disbelievers. Why? Allah continues in this verse in the Kathir brings so that the people would not have any argument they will not have any argument from Allah upon themselves after the messengers were sent because you know other messengers came before the prophet and that was sufficient for the people but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his wisdom, knowing that the people deviated, that they changed the books, that they are from amongst those who left the guidance, he sent one last prophet so that Allah won't punish them, establish the fact that they left off the guidance and went astray after all of those prophets were sent. All of those prophets were sent to guide them, but the people went astray. All of those prophets were sent with the message that the people belied the message. 
All of those prophets were sent. The people should have been on track. But they turned away. So Allah sent one more prophet. Why? لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةٌ بَعْدَ الرُّسُلِ So that after those prophets were sent, and you all went from being guided to being astray, from believing to disbelieving, one more chance so that you won't be punished, so that I won't have that as an evidence upon you, O people, after those messengers were sent for you to be guided. So the Prophet Sallam is the last chance. But the people said Jesus was the Savior. Nobody's else coming. He's the comforter. He came to save you. Allah sent the prophet that you be guided. Allah sent the prophet that you be saved. As Imam Malik, he said, As-Sunnatu, As-Sunnatu, Ma'adha, As-Sunna, As-Sunnatu, Kasafinatu Noh. The Sunnah of the prophet is like the ship of Noah's ark. The Sunnah of the Prophet is an example of what happened in the time of Noah. Man raqi baha faqad najah. Whoever got on that ship, what happened to them? They were saved. Whoever didn't get on that ship, they were destroyed. So if you get on the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallam, Despite what time you live in, despite what land you are in, despite what tests and tribulations are going on throughout the earth, you will be saved. Likewise, the opposite is uh, true to hold. If you abandon it, like the people who abandoned the ship, you will be destroyed. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the prophet Mubashirin wa Munzirin as a giver of glad tidings to the believers. As a warner to those who disbelieve. As a giver of glad tidings to those who accept. As a warner to those who reject. So that Allah will not establish a punishment, an argument against them after all of those prophets and messengers were sent before time. Ibn Kathir, he says, وَخَتَّمَهُمْ Nabi Al-Ummi Al-Arabi Al-Makki Al-Hadi and this which I mentioned, now I'm actually reading the statement of Ibn Kathir. He says that the Prophet ﷺ, those prophets of Allah said, he sent the Prophet in order that there would not be evidence upon the people after those messengers. Those messengers were completed with the Prophet that was from the unlearned Arabs of Mecca, the one who was guided, the one who had the clearest way. From all of them, his way is the clearest. Why? Because it's complete. And anything that's complete is going to be clearer, better than something that's incomplete. As Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala said, Al yawm akmatu lakum deenakum. On this day I've completed your deen for you. Wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati. And I have also, on top of completing your deen, I completed my favor upon you too. It's Islam is a favor. But well, these two, lakum al Islam And I am pleased. And I am pleased. And I am pleased with Islam as your religion. So here, this shows that the Prophet has the clearest way. The Prophet Sallam was sent with the clearest way. And that Allah sent the Prophet Sallam to all of Allah's creation. In totality, min al ins wal jinn, min al ins wal jinn, from amongst the uh, the people and the jinn. Here, Ibn Kathir, he says, min al ins wal jinn, from the people and jinn. But when Allah mentions this in the Quran, he says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ wal ins إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدُونَ I have not created the jinn. And the mankind except the worship me. Here Ibn Kathir mentions the human being and then the jinn. Why do you think Ibn Kathir switched the order of this around? Why didn't Ibn Kathir mention jinn first, like Allah in the Quran, and then human being? Whether he mentioned the human being first. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Think about it. What do you, what, what what comes to your mind? What do you think could be possible? Why he did that? 
to make it clear. To make it clear. Wallah, Allahu A'lam. As is not explained here, that the point of him doing this is this or that. But when you think about the history of the human being and the jinn, the status of the human being and the jinn, the argument of the human of the human being and the jinn, the trick that Shaytan, which was from the jinn, which is Salam, played on Adam. You can see that Allah had raised the human being above the jinn. His status and ability. As there are hadith that show that the person yani, can out outstrip the malaika. Because the malaika, they have a set iman, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. They don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it relates to what he tells them to do. Rather, they only do what they're commanded. But we have a choice. And any time a person makes a choice to please Allah willingly, or to do something that Allah has commanded them to do willingly, or to avoid something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told them to avoid willingly, this makes the, uh, this makes the uh, status of the individual with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala foremost than those who don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. So here, it appears, this is why Ibn Kathir mentions an int with jinn rather than jinn with int like Allah did in the Quran. And Allah mentioned them in the Quran in that order to show which one was created first. As Allah mentioned in other verse, وَقَلَقَ الْجَانْ مِنْ قَبَلُ Adam, And we created the jinn before Adam. And in this verse, where Allah mentioned the purpose of life, he mentioned a jinn will end showing the order of creation to Allah. And all of those creations that the Prophet ﷺ came in contact with until Yom al Qiyamah. Meaning, he was sent to them as a giver of glad tidings or warning. But come up, call Allah Ta'ala, as Allah says in his noble book. You can see he continues. As he says, Qudiyayuhannas, say, O people, in the Rasulullah ilaykum jami'an, verily, I am the messenger of Allah to you all. I left something out of the translation. Here while Ibn Kathir says that the Prophet was sent He was sent to all of Allah's great creation This means from the various colors and tribes So it wasn't just sent to the humans and the jinns But to all of the nationalities, all of the colors Arab Yani from the red man, I mean the Asian, from the white man, the original European, like this, and uh, you know, the, the Arab and the Ajam, the Africans and the Asians, like this. And then Ibn Kathir he brings the verse of Allah to certify his statement. Say, O people, in me Rasulullah alaykum jamian. Allah says, Say to them, Verily, I'm the messenger of Allah to all of you. I am the messenger of Allah, the Lord, that to him, he belongs everything that is in the heavens and the earth. La ilaha illahu. There is no deity except him. Yuhyiwa you meet. He gives life and he gives death. Wa aminu billahi wa rasuli. So believe in Allah and his messenger. And Nabi al-Ummi, the prophet that was sent as an uneducated one. Alladhi Yu'min billahi wa kalimatuhu that prophet they believed in Allah and the word of Allah what tabi'uhu so follow that messenger la'allakum tahtadun and follow him so that you will be guided follow him 
so that you will be guided. And we'll stop here, inshallah, for some hours and work it out. Subhanallah, wa bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illahu wa astaghfiru wa tawbu ilayh. Any questions? You know, you, uh, you, know, you mentioned you mentioned about the origin of the, of the jinn. Yes. And uh, in, in the, like you said, uh, uh, <coughs> we all is it not true that we all created with the jinn, and we have to? That's why I come, you know, in order for us to become a devout servant of Almighty God, Allah, we have to transform that jinn into worshiping Allah. Is that? Um, we're not created with a gen like a gen inside of you, or some people might think you say in, mm -hmm. but we are created and assigned to us a gen to whisper that which would be a test for us. And the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned in the hadith, it's authentically before the Muhammad Wasallam, he was in the masjid one time. And he captured the jinn. He was praying, the jinn uh, went in front of him. He grabbed the jinn, and he restrained the jinn, and he wanted to tie the jinn up. He wanted to tie the jinn up and to have the jinn in the masjid so when the people came the next day they could see him, mm -hmm. see how he looked and, you know, bother him, play with him like this, you know. But he said that what made him um, forego that decision was that he remembered the dua of Sulaiman, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him uh, ability and um, dominion over different things in creation and jinn were one of them. And then Sulaiman, when he asked Allah for this, Allah promised that he would give him uh, ownership over that which no one else would have after him. So the Prophet would be violating that request of Sulaiman. Showing respect to Prophet Sulaiman, alayhi salatu wa salam. He said, everybody, jinn, is assigned to him and he whispers and he encourages him except that Allah has blessed me to subdue mine he only calls and says that which is good to me so nobody else has the permission to make his jinn submit or to control his jinn like that rather he or she should be involved in zikr remembering Allah to wa ta'ala seeking refuge from the whisper of the jinn which comes in the form of thoughts and imaginations. And this is what I know from the issue, and not that we can control our jinn. Allah must stop. Is it clear? Yes. When we mention the issue of um, disbelieving in the message of Allah, is it like people who have not accepted Islam disbelieving? Or is it like Muslims who believe in Allah, but they disbelieve in Allah? It's, it's equal. It's equal. If you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this means you have to believe in the messenger. And this doesn't mean that the person won't reject certain things. Because some people say if you reject, and there are some statements of the ulama of the past who rejects anything from the Prophet Sunnah then he is a disbeliever. But here, a person could reject something thinking that it's not sunnah, or reject something thinking that it's custom. So it's not all the way across the board when it comes to that. But if a person knows it's been made clear to him as sunnah, it's been made clear to her sunnah, and they openly reject it, then this is kufr. As you have to believe in the Prophet As Allah just mentioned, the Prophet Amin Billahi wa and maybe you ummi. You have to believe in Allah and His Messenger and the Prophet that was illiterate. This is part of the Shahada. And that's why if any person, the Prophet was sent to them, they disbelieve, they were deemed disbelievers. What made the Jews disbelieve? One of them was that they called on other than Allah. One of them was that they disbelieved in Asa. 
What makes the Christians disbelievers? For those who say they're not disbelievers. They're people of the book. They're people of the book and they're disbelievers. They're non Muslim because that's in our language. We go back to Arabic as disbelievers. Kufar. This is a language issue. What makes them non Muslim? Disbelievers. Kufar. One of them is that they worship with Allah other than Allah. Another is what? They reject Muhammad. Hakada. Allah Sabah wa Ta'ala mentioned this about yani, other prophets, how they just they belie the messenger. Allah said, messenger. But we know that, you know, these people, they just believe in all of the messengers. So they say from this verse, if you belie one, you belie them all. You have to accept them all. You see? So some people, they think, I'm Muslim, but the different ways you disbelieve in the messenger is not disbelief. A lot of disbelief. A Muslim can die and go to hell if he disbelieve in the prophet. Like some people that say, we don't have to take the hadith, we only take the Quran. A lot we ask some of the ulama in Saudi about this. Because it's prevalent in America. You have other groups. But we have in America groups that, you know, like the War of Deen, for example. The people that were from the fathers of War of Deen Muhammad, the son of Elijah Muhammad. Mm -hmm. This is one of their qa'id, one of their beliefs. They say, we don't need the Quran, brother. We're not with the Quran. We're with the, I mean, we don't need the hadith, hadith. pardon me. Hadith. We need the hadith, brother. We're with the Quran because the Quran is the word of Allah. The hadith is the word of men. Are you serious? Wallahi, they say that it's open face and sincerity, and they're not confused. They mean that. Mm -hmm. They've been brainwashed. Mm -hmm. When you bring them hadith, they laugh at it. They said, the Prophet said, on the day when the Jew will be behind him, the, the tree stump and the wolf and these different things talk. Ha, 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 What kind of prophet is this? This is it's just that. Just make a mockery of the Prophet You can't do that. Mm -hmm. You see? You know, and they talk bad about the different sahab and this and that. But they say, Imam will have been this, Imam will have been that. This is the belief in the Prophet. You know? Mm -hmm. They make fun, they say we're not Arab, you know, we're African American, you know, subhanAllah. And, and they mean that when they say we don't need the hadith, they will not take any hadith. Mm -hmm. Those who grow and learn a little bit of, of Islam and they leave from that mentality, yes. But the ones who stuck like whatever that movement says, they're with, they will not take anything from a hadith. Wallah. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you, brother, we don't take no hadith. That's the word of men. We take the Quran. We ask the ulama in Saudi, they said kafir. Mm -hmm. They call Qur'ani yun. Mm -hmm. They said the kufar. Mm -hmm. And the hadith is application of Quran. I mean, because the reality is, if you say that about hadith, then you have to take the Quran with ayat the line, flush it too. Those same people who brought you the hadith, they're the same people who brought you the Quran. Duh. Mm -hmm. You've been brainwashed, you see? So, it's equal. If you're Muslim, you disbelieve in the Prophet. Of course, there's something that, in, 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 in conclusion, should be made clear. That's not for Amatanah. That's not for common folk. When we say common folk, that includes me. I'm a student of knowledge. I'm called Imam because I work in a masjid and Sheikh because I have some knowledge over people as a student, but I'm not Sheikh. I'm not Imam. When we talk about Imam, Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Thawwi, Imam Uyayna, Imam Ahmed, Imam, 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 Imam. Those are Imams. They were leaders over a whole group of people. Even them, they're not going to say that person is kafir until they go get that person or send for that person and find out why did he say it, why does he believe it. Then they clarify, bring some evidence, and they give them time. Then if that person still insists, he's stubborn, he doesn't understand, you know, make clarity again, patient, because guidance is from Allah. But once it's made clear, that person he understands, he's just stubborn, then they will pass the ruling on that individual. So we don't take the ruling and apply it to an individual, but it's for us to understand the ruling with Allah is you a kafir, so we can stay away from it. That's how serious it is. So this is for non-Muslim who disbelieve in the Prophet as well as Muslim. Allah Muslim. Alhamdulillah.